everybody. How's it going? So it's uh, Let's Talk time and I wanted to have a quick chat about what happens to your body when you experience a little bit of shock because some of you might have noticed uh, that I popped a post up about my son today who is involved in a, just a minor, I mean, it still means something, but it wasn't severe enough to take, you know, a whole busload of kids to hospital. So nobody was majorly injured, which is fantastic news, although the kids did experience something today that they hadn't experienced before, and because of that, some of them didn't know how to process it. And each child's different, and the circumstances of where they were when the accident happened, what happened to them when the accident happened, and all that sort of stuff, what happens there is then their body sometimes doesn't know how to process what's just happened because it's happened so fast. It's just like a shock, right? So today um, when my son's school bus was parked at school unloading children, they were hopping out of the bus, there was a, I'm not sure if you've seen a skip bin truck, but a skip bin truck was going past and even though the cab of the truck might have made it past, the actual arms of the truck where skip bins are held on did not make it past. So we'll put a big hole in the back of the bus, up the top of the roof. It slammed the bus and shook the bus sideways. So the kids who were already off the bus were fine. They were a little bit of shock of seeing it happen. But there were some kids on the bus who um, were sitting near where it happens. So they copped a bit of whiplash, you know, their necks going forward, a bit of pain in the necks. There was also um, a few kids who were standing up at the time as well and were also exiting the bus at the time it happened. So one little girl got taken to hospital. Uh, she got taken to hospital at a neck brace. But her little brother, who uh, is in grade seven, was extremely emotional about that. Um, the actual whole visual thing for him of being able to out of the blue have this big bang and a big jolt and seeing his sister hit her head and then ambulances coming and putting her in a neck brace and taking her to the hospital. Those sort of things can be really traumatic for people to witness, especially kids, if they've never seen it before or never really spoke about that sort of stuff before. There are times when consciously we go, wow, oh, shit, that was, that was nuts. But, all right, cool, okay, I'm not injured, so I'm okay at thinking I'm cool. But then after a little bit of time, the next time you go to get on that bus again, whether it's getting on the bus and you're feeling just that little bit different or you're on the bus and it's okay, when you go to the bus, that's when the emotions bubble to the surface and you realise that, your body hasn't dealt with the emotion. You think you've dealt with it mentally, but you haven't dealt with it like inside your body, right? So instead of you dealing with it, the emotion just goes, ah, oh, I don't know what to do, and just lodges somewhere in your body, right? So that emotion doesn't pop up again until you experience that again. So the thing is, I had a big talk to my son about it, and um, <laughs> when I picked him up, I said to him, man, how come you didn't tell anybody you're on the bus? <laughs> because he was the only kid who the school didn't know was on the bus and <laughs> went to class and had two classes and the first morning break. And it wasn't until teachers were going around to the classroom asking if anyone else was involved. And um, <laughs> let's just say he put his hand up and said, oh, that's me. Um, and because that was him, they took him up to the office and they wanted to talk to him to make sure that he wasn't physically hurt or emotionally hurt. And the principal rung me and he said, I think he's in a little bit of shock because he's not talking very much. I can't get much out of him. And I said, that's just my son. That's just how he is. He won't tell you if he's hurt or injured. Unless he's dying, he's not going to actually, you know, come forward and say, I'm in a little bit of pain or anything like that. He'll just move on with it. So when they said that he, they thought he might be in shock because he wasn't talking much, I thought, all right, we'll go pick him up and see what 
to have a chat. So we picked up, we went to Hungry Jack's because Hungry Jack's is right across the road from the school. Um, and he wanted to try this burger. I think it's called the Cheesy Bacon Butt Burger or something. And it's like a burger with chips and bacon and cheese. So that was the break the ice thing, right? Sweet, let's go over to Hungry Jack's. Let's get what you want. And that brings the endorphins of being happy, being safe, being comfortable. And then we had to talk about exactly what happened and where he was on the bus. And, you know, two totally things I'm so proud of him for is that he waited till everyone else, like other people, were off the bus. He didn't just jump up and race off the bus. He said, so many kids do that. And he would just sat there and wait. So then when he got up, he actually was holding on to the handle. Even adults don't do that. So I'm so proud of him for doing that and having safety first because that's actually, you know, why he wasn't injured because he was actually holding on to a pole when it actually happened. So, woohoo, my son. Thanks, buddy. And it shows I'm teaching you something right. But here's the thing. So once we got talking, he said to me, Mum, yeah, I think I'm in a bit of shock. And I said, oh, really, mate? I said, why is that? And he goes, I thought I was going to crap my pants. Like I literally thought I, I thought I was really going to crap my pants. <laughs> and so we had a really good laugh and we laughed that emotion out and we, and we had a really good giggle about how funny it would have been if you crapped your pants. <laughs> and, um, and I'm sure he would have went and told somebody that he was on the bus so he could come home. So we had a good laugh about that. But we're going to let his body process tonight. Being a car, you know, a, a motor vehicle accident, we had to go to the doctor to make sure we get a report that physically he's okay. So over the next couple of days, we're going to be looking out for any emotional changes or any behavioural changes or any parts of the body that do start hurting because that there can be a sign that he's got a few emotions that he hasn't been able to process from this sh shock because it's a shock. We're not prepared. So if we're not prepared... How the hell do we respond to something we're not prepared, prepared to? It's just like, that's why it's a shock. So we might deal with it here. We might look at it and say, this is totally okay. I'm, I'm okay with this. But then you may find physically you're not injured, but then over the next week or two weeks you may find that you start things are niggling pains, you know, like, oh, just that sore knee or sore shoulder or you're changing behaviour. You're not feeling as good as you normally would or you get on that bus, you go back into that situation and you feel the emotions bubbling inside you or you can't explain the feelings that you're going through. That there is when you need to reach out, guys, okay? So don't just think that dealing with shock is dealing with this and seeing. Dealing with shock also, you need to deal with the emotions that are running through your body and it's okay to cry, it's okay to scream, it's okay to be angry and frustrated and all those things about the situation because you are in shock, but you then need to deal with the emotion as well, guys. So don't just deal with it consciously, deal with it subconsciously. And if you can't get rid of that emotion, you need to reach out to people, people like myself. There's so many other people who can do emotional work these days and are emotional healers, and I'm loving that people are embracing that because emotional healing it, it clears physical elements and sicknesses. So clear yourself emotionally. This is the only house we get, guys. You can't move out. <laughs> this is what you get. And there's, the rental on it is forever. There's a no-break lease. I'm sorry. So the way you want to treat this is what you're going to get in return, guys. So, all right. Well, that's Let's Talk Fight. So just remember, please, if you experience a shock, Make sure you don't just deal with it consciously. Make sure you deal with it emotionally, okay? Feel it through your body. Feel if there's any changes in your body, any changes in mood, any changes in any physical, and have a talk to someone. Just reach out. I'm always here if you need to just have a chat. So send us a message. All right, guys. I love you all. Oh, you might be guessing where I am, right? I've never done a video here before. Ooh. This is my new abundance room, um, my new consultation area where people can come along and have one-on-one -on -one coaching and we have mirrors over here where you can do some mirror work and we have just a nice space for you to come and relax and do release whatever you're holding on to.
Joy night, just remember the only person you can be better than is the person you were yesterday. And try and make somebody smile. If not, put a smile on your own face. Alrighty guys, have a good night. Bye.